there is a very short window of opportunity here to find a boat and a captain who will take me on. So I am headed to find Jonathan on the Time Bandit. I've never met him, but you know, I need a boat. Captain Jonathan Hillstrand, well, the one thing I know for sure, he's worked in Alaska for over 40 years. I mean, there's local knowledge and knowledge of a fishery that I'm only gonna gain by going with someone with his history. And I'm hopeful to have a conversation with him and um, you know, we'll see what happens. Wire down! Okay. Hey there. But right now, we're going for golden crabs. It was really good to us last year. Pretty excited. Yeah. You get the fish from my brother Andy. This is gonna be good. Linda the Greenlaw. Linda the Greenlaw, which I haven't seen for probably 25 years. The last time I saw her, I was on the East Coast working out of New Bedford, Massachusetts, because um, we didn't have a season for king crab. But uh, I couldn't afford to not make money. So I was new to New Bedford, and then I bought a boat, the County Explorer. I spent every dime I had. So Linda, she was running a boat called the Hannah Boat, fish in George's Bank. You know, I was just a new guy on the East Coast. I had any friends. They're telling me, and this is our bank. And I go, is your granddad's name George? Because this is George's bank. <laughs> it's nobody's bank. And, and it was just, she was one of the boats that, that sort of ate my lunch. That's the other boat's beeper there. This is one of theirs, right? Uh, yeah. Get your clippers. If you can get his line up, cut it. Well clear! Just cut my buoys off. You know, this was 30 years ago, 25 years ago, but it's like I didn't have no money to replace those buoys and stuff she ran over, you know? I was just starting out. I almost lost my business because of that. So it was a big deal to me. Hey, Skipper. <coughs> How you doing? Hey, good, thanks. Um, Linda. Linda Greenlaw, I know yeah. you. Yeah, right on, well. Um, Back east? Yes, I'm from what Maine. Are, what the hell are you doing here? Well, I, um, I came here with a little bit of quota, and I'm looking for a boat to fish it. I mean, it's important to me to get on the boat yeah. with my quota. She don't remember, you know. She didn't say, oh, I'm so sorry, I cut your gear off. All of a sudden, she asked for a job on my boat. Yeah. Don't, you don't recognize me, do you? We, we have met before. I don't, I don't know if you know this, but I ran a boat on the East Coast out of New Bedford, Massachusetts in the early 90s. And oh, wow. You some of my gear one time. Really? Yeah. You'd, you'd, lo you'd run my buoys over with your long line gear and cut my buoys off. And, and I was just a new guy. Well, uh, that's ancient history. I'm here looking for a boat. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got two captains already. There's lots of other guys in town. Might take you. So good luck. Yeah, thanks. OK. But watch out, Linda. Don't mess with the time, Bannon. Unbelievable. Apparently, sometime in the early 90s, according to Jonathan Hillstrand, I cut his line. What the hell? I've had hundreds of instances where I've been, you know, tangled up with someone else's line, long lining for swordfish. And um, I mean, that's what you do. You know, you cut it let it go. I, I've never maliciously cut someone's line. If I cut his line, I was doing us both a favor. You know, part of fishing, I mean, any fishing industry, you have gear conflicts. If I held a grudge every time I had a little gear interaction with someone, I don't know, I guess I'd be one miserable Sounds like he thinks I might be a liability, but um, that doesn't really set well with me. I know how to run a boat. 
I know how to lead a crew. I've got a lot of time at sea, perhaps more than some of the captains that I'm approaching. These people don't know me. Back in 1985, I was fishing out of Portland, Maine with the Gloria Dawn, my first boat that I captained. <clears throat> We'd been at the dock for about a month. We were re-rigging from the swordfish fishery to a halibut fishery. It's getting close to sailing day. I looked down and I could see the crown of someone's head, just the top of someone's head. I said, oh, Jesus, someone's in the water. And I pulled up and the guy was still alive. Two of my crewmen, they helped him on the boat. You know, they got him dried off. And one of my crewmen says, Uncle Patty. I was like, you know this guy? Yeah, it's my uncle, my Uncle Patty, and he's going fishing with us. He was a down and out drunk and he was like living on the streets. And it was a great source of pride for him and his family to have him going out on a boat. And I think that played a little bit in my decision at the end of the day to take him fishing. So I agreed. We threw the lines, off we went. So it was a big relief to throw the lines after a lot of work at the dock. That's the hardest part of this trip is behind us. Five days into the trip, we finally reached the fishing grounds. I get down where the cruise quarters are I can't get Uncle Patty up. Like, he won't move. Like, he's yellow. His eyes are stuck open. He died on the boat. It's like, wow, you know, now what do we do? I couldn't really see myself fishing with a corpse. Um, that and two of the crew members were related to Uncle Patty. Uh, we laid him out in the bait freezer and started the long trip home. Should never, ever, ever, ever have taken him offshore. So I would consider that the liability, not me but I'm not in a position to argue about this. Boats are gonna be cast in lines and starting their trips. I don't wanna be sitting here on the dock.